I hope you're having a wonderful day and welcome to this new Blender tutorial in which we're gonna keep going with the same idea as the same two videos we have before because I kind of want to make a, like a whole video with all of these um, look-alike kind of renders and I think we're going to be able to see two different compositions in this one video because one is like two steps before in the in the process than the other one so I, I, I can like highlight when we, I'm going to make the first render so just for you to know that in this video maybe it's a little bit longer but we're going to get two different compositions from this one tutorial so without anything else to say let's just begin with this tutorial So the first thing we have to do is to add our camera because it's the first thing that we have to get, get really clear before uh, we begin with all the uh, geometry nodes. So we're going to bring our camera to the scene and then we're going to add right here a... And then we're going to change the rotation of this camera by going uh, in the object properties and we're going to set the rotation in X to zero. The every we're going to set all the rotations in zero and then we're going to put the y, uh, the x rotation to 90 and with this we will get the camera looking completely to the front and now we're going to go into the ma uh, we're going to press shift a again and we're going to add another curve in this case a circle now what we need is that this circle uh, goes through the way of our camera so that we, no we don't have to animate the camera and the only animated thing is the is the circle and the mesh that we're watching in the animation. So we're going to press R and then rotate in the Y axis 90 degrees, scale the circle up maybe something like this and now if you press right here you can see your composition from the side and now press G set and you can put the side of your circle right in the origin so that it goes through your camera. Now that we have this set we're going to go into the geometry nodes panel and we're going to add a new geometry nodes. We're going to press shift A and search for a curve to mesh. We're going to plug it into the group input and output and we're going to search for a circle curve, curve circle sorry, and we're going to plug it into the profile curve. Now, as you can see, we're getting this kind of, uh, I don't know, weird uh, looking sphere thing. But to fix all of this, first we have to change the radius of our circle. We're going to make it a little bit small. If you go to the camera view, so we're getting like this kind of mesh mistake right here. And that's because we don't have enough subdivisions. So we're going to add a resample curve node and we're going to put it right here. And we're going to change the count of our circle. And now if we go into the camera view, we don't have this obstacle no more. So we're going to be make this radius a lot smaller, something around here, so that you can see like where the, the, the kind of tunnel is going. Well, in this case I put 0.01 and it works perfectly. And then we're going to press Shift A again and we're going to change this from mesh to curve again. And we're gonna plug it right here. And now as you can see we got this really interesting grid that is where we're going to instance our objects. So we're we can change the count of our tunnel to get more grid, like, like more uh, subdivisions in the length of the, of the tunnel. But we can also change the resolution of the curved circle to change the number of cuts we have right here. Now to make our first composition we are going to go back into the layout and we're going to press Shift A add the new cylinder right here and we're going to change the number of vertices to six maybe and now we get this hexagon uh, polygon thing and we're going to press uh, select our cylinder we're going to move it a little bit to the side so that it doesn't go through our composition and then we're going to press tab press the number three to select faces and we're going to select the top and the bottom face we're going to press i to insert a face right here and then you're going to press X and select faces. We're going to press the number two to select sides of our polygon and we're going to select two of these, the one of the top and the one in the bottom, and we're going to press F to put a face right here. And we're going to repeat that same process real quick with the rest of the sides. And now we got this kind of hexagon tube, I don't know and then press S, Z and scale it down so that we get like 
beautiful hexagon. Now we're going to go back into the geometry nodes and select our curve with all the instances and all of that. And for now we're going to select these nodes and move it a little bit down, move them a little bit down and connect again your group input into the group output. And right here we're going to press Shift A and look for a instance on points node. We're going to plug it right here and then select your cylinder right here and drag it into your geometry nodes and connect the geometry into the instance. And I'm not sure why we're, why we're getting the original uh, proportions of our hexagons, but we can uh, scale them as well from the scale uh, parameter in the instance on points. So we're going to go into our camera view and we're going to change first The scale, um, we're going to change first x-axis that I found that 0.01 works really well. Then we're going to go into the y-axis and write exactly the same thing. But in the z-axis, we're going to write 0.001. And if we go into the camera view, we can see that we're getting this uh, hexagon in a perfect size. So now we have to make uh, bring a lot more of hexagons into our compositions and to do that we're just going to select this resample curve and plug it into the uh, group input that goes into the instance and points. And now as you can see they're all uh, like lined up in the in the y-axis and we don't really want that and a really quick way to change that is to search for a null normal node and plug it into the rotation of our instances and now if we go into the camera view we can see this beautiful composition we're getting right here press shift a and search for a transform node and we're going to plug this transform right before the resample curve and if we change the rotation in the z-axis you can see that we make our hexagons move forward towards our camera. So we're going to move this a little bit down and from this corner you can see that your mouse turns into a little uh, like kind of cross and you can bring up a new window and we're going to change this window to timeline. And now in the first frame our mouse above we're going to put our mouse in the set rotation and press I to create a new keyframe and then we're going to go into the last keyframe of our animation and maybe write 360 to make it give a, a complete loop and maybe it's way <laughs> too fast so I'm going to put the half of it maybe 180 and press I again and now it is looking a lot better last but not least we're going to press shift A and add right here a set material material right here and we're going to go into the material properties and we're going to add two materials right here we're going to press new in the both of them and then in the first one change the base color to black and maybe name it black in the second one select it and name it white but in this white color we're going to change the emission color to completely white and now if we turn on the render and select the material right here, we were going to click the white one, we can see that we're getting our um, uh, objects lighted, lightened up. But we cannot see clearly what's going on, and since we're going to be rendering in Eevee, we're going to make a copy of this. We're going to select all of these uh, hexagons, and then press Shift V. It's important that when you create the copy in the geometry nodes, click this little number 2 because all the changes you make from now on are going to apply in both of them if you don't click it. So we're going to change now this material to black and I'm going to maybe uh, change the, the roughness of this material to 1 and then go back into your first frame and change the set rotation just a little bit. Point of O2 is working perfectly right now. So we're going to go into the last frame and change this point 180 to 180.2 and press I again. And now if we press play we can see that both of our um, rings are moving together and we're getting this beautiful effect right here. So this would be the first composition that we're going to make. Maybe you can make some changes in order to make your composition a little bit darker. 
In my case, I'm going to change the world color into black. And I'm going to render this in a vertical view. So I'm going to go into the format and change this to 180 and the Y size to 1920. And now we're getting this vertical um, a screen view. And now if we go into the layout and press render image, we can see the composition we're getting. And remember to go into your output properties right here and select where you want to save these uh, renders that you're going to generate. So in this point is where I am going to make the first animation that is going to look just how you're watching right now on the screen. And maybe I'm going to put in the video also the final render of this composition. And now we're going to use the same set of geometry nodes that we have made up to now in the tutorial to create the second composition that we're going to do. So once the render is done, we're going to select one of these uh, loops that has uh, one of the two colors and we're going to delete it because we're only going to use one for our second render and we're going back, we're going back into our geometry nodes panel. Now we're going back into the solid view as well because we wouldn't be able to see anything in case we delete the one with the, uh, with the colors and we can also close this window right here because the animation is already done. Now we're going to move all of this to the top, we're not going to delete it because maybe we use something in this node tree later and we're going to plug back the other tree we made at the beginning and right here is where we left that tree. So now we're going to take this same instance on points, we're going to press shift D to duplicate it and right here in the, in the, in the instance we're not going to use uh, this shape again, we're going to press shift A and search for a cube and we're going to plug it into the instance. And now as you can see we're getting a lot of cubes in our composition, this can get, this can get uh, kind of laggy and at some point. But uh, we can go into the camera view to see how this thing is looking and we're going to make these cubes a lot smaller. And now we're getting these flat cubes, I'm not sure why again, if someone can tell me in the comments I would be really grateful, but we can scale them as well. But in case you're getting a lot of lag by trying to scale these cubes up, what you can do is to reduce the count of uh, cubes from right here to something lower, like maybe 500. And now we're uh, getting rid of a lot of lag. But in order to get rid of the lag, we have to uh, get rid a lot uh, from a lot of uh, cubes that are making like empty spaces in our in our little tunnel. So, so what we have to do to fix that is to take this trans this same transform node and plug it into the beginning of this uh, node tree. And now we are going to scale this thing down. Maybe you can leave the camera view to do that. And bring this number down maybe to 0.5 I don't know I think a little bit smaller is is still okay maybe point, point 0.1 is going to be great and then change your X translation to bring it back to your camera and remember we're changing the X translation because at the beginning we rotated this uh, this this circle so now their their X and Y axis have changed we have uh, our tunnel working, if we press play we can see our animation moving and in case you want to change again the count of, of, of cubes you can uh, modify that from the resample curve node or the how many cubes you want in each face from the uh, curved circle right here. And maybe what I want to do right now is to take my camera and rotate it just a little bit in the x-axis by pressing R and X so that I can see where my uh, tunnel is going if I go back into the camera view now I can see where all of uh, my, my, my where the, the cubes are moving towards and now we're going to duplicate this uh, set material node and plug it right here and now we can delete everything left in the top part of our tree just for organization because it doesn't really matter if you have it right there and if we turn on the material view, we can see that we're looking at a lot of uh, black cubes. And now the last thing we, we need to do is to make the same thing as we did in the past tutorial with the, with the wireframe cubes and the, the ones inside them. And to do that, we have to duplicate the set material and the instance on points by pressing Shift D and adding right here a joint geometry, I'm sorry. 
join geometry node and plug it right here and plug the second um, set material into this joint geometry. So we're going to change this black material into the white one, the, the one that shines, and we're going to plug this mesh to curve into the points of the instance on points. And before we plug this uh, cube into the instance on point, we're going to duplicate this mesh to curve and put it something around here, maybe move your cube a little bit to the back, and then select the curve to mesh and curve circle and duplicate it as well. We're going to use this mesh to curve to turn our cubes into curves, and then we're going to turn it back to mesh using this circle in the sides. And now we get this beautiful composition right here. In this case, we're going, to, we're going to turn down the resolution by a lot, maybe putting something like 4 right here, because if, not, uh, if we don't do that, we're going to get a lot of polygons everywhere and that will get really laggy. And now change the radius to something like 0.001. That's it. And now we're getting this beautiful composition. And if we press play, they're moving towards us. And now uh, we only have to go into the output properties and remember to change the place in which you are saving uh, this new composition because if you don't you're going to uh, be you're going to delete the ones you, you made before so I'm going to write here uh, frames animation 2 and I'm going to select this folder and save it right here and now we just have to go into the render and render animation and that's all we have to do to create this beautiful animation right here. I think this video is kind of long, but it's totally worth it since you're getting two different products from just one video. If you like it, please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. And I think I will be uploading one more tutorial in this uh, black and white compositions. In case you like it, please make sure to leave a like. Practice a lot and I hope to see you in the next tutorial.